out here to break the safe. Come to find out, Peach's boyfriend was still somewhere around lurking. That's where we at, Larry. Talk about this scene. <laughs> man. Go ahead, man. What is it, Larry? What is it? What is it? <laughs> First of all, I just want to tell everyone, if you're ever in a situation like this, broken legs heal. Don't be afraid to jump out that window. You know, <laughs> thank you, Larry. What the fuck was Miguel thinking? Like, dude, I can get, tell you right now, if, dude, a, if get out yes, that window. a get dude out that goes window. over there and just murks somebody, you, you, I'm not you. waiting for him to come back nope. in the room. No, I'm nope. out the window. I get it. Out it's a second story. It's high. Your natural instinct is going to be like, nah, I'm not jumping. You need to overcome that and jump out the damn window. Is it second? Is it two story? This is like a one story house, Larry. This ain't two stories. This is no, they went upstairs. House. It was two stories. They went upstairs. I would have still been out the window. Yeah, I still would have been out the window. Right. I would have been out the window. I don't care how many stories. I ain't about to, This dude wouldn't shot somebody like that. He yeah. just met him. If you just met this guy, obviously, you just met me. What happens if what you don't want, what happens if I open the safe and what you want ain't in there? Right. Go yeah. ahead, Larry. I mean, I. I... I felt bad for this dude getting capped because it was such an unnecessary death, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, it was so unnecessary. You know, it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, Franklin was just spiraling. And this is one, this is one of those scenes. I felt like it was just, it took it too far. Like this dude didn't need to get, like, I understand the crackhead getting killed, but you know, like it would have been like I would have much rather if, if I would have much rather if, if if this guy would have been like I don't know what's going on here I'm out and mm -hmm. like dropped his tools and and ran out the house and Franklin and the crackhead got into it you know and then he killed the crackhead and, and then Franklin went ahead and opened the safe on his own but it was just too much this whole just I mean there was no need to kill this guy for what. They just felt like they need to give him an extra body during this episode. I mean, the dude's killed enough people. He don't need to kill just some random, some random laborer. I mean, the locksmith dude for what? We we supposed to assume he was gonna take that twelve thousand, Larry, and he was gonna probably call the police and tell. That's what we were supposed to assume. Yeah, I got. I I understood that, but it just it, I don't see how it advanced the narrative. It seemed like a senseless killing to me. Okay, so T Street, I come to you. I'm gonna tell you what I think. I think that was put in there because when he told him he could go and take the money, all the angst you was feeling toward Franklin for me in that moment when he was going to let that guy go, when it felt like he was going to let him go, yeah, I said to me. myself, you're right. I said, you know what? I can get back on board with Franklin saying he's going to let this guy go. And then all of a sudden, what happens, T-Streams? I got the video for you, t stream Here we go. Let me give you the video. <laughs> Who are you? What the, what the fuck are you doing? Where's Peaches at? He's just, he's just round back. Here, I'll no, show no. you. <laughs> Twelve grand. I've got three kids, man. I swear to God, I won't see shit. All right, if the cops to ask, I'll say it was another white boy dope fiend who did all of this shit. Put it in your pocket. What's your name again? You go. Flores. Go on, get out of here. Go. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, well, the perfect example of at the wrong place at the wrong time for sure. And you know, <clears throat> it was an unnecessary kill, but I tell you, I, I think they they actually did that to sort of solidify what was getting ready, what was getting ready to happen with that that true dark side that he was getting ready to go into. Um, it it was un, it was it definitely was uncalled for. Um, I don't even see how he, how Miguel even would have thought anyway that he was getting ready to get up out of there. 
I mean, me neither. If, if he was thinking right, I mean, I understand, you know, you, you, you deal with, with fear and stuff like that. And sometimes your thoughts get jumbled when you, when you forced to make, you know, life, you know, life decisions and stuff, but his ass should have been gone. You know? T stream. Like Larry said, his leg should have been broke trying to get out that window. Yeah. And then secondly, when Franklin told him he should go, you don't soiree your ass like yeah, you run. You thank you. Thank you. Run. Like you, you run, you haul. Because first of all, Franklin's sitting on the ground and he said you can go. Instead of running the hell up, you soireeing and shit like you's a pageant or something. Yeah, I'd run. been up out that house. I've been halfway down. Run. I wouldn't even have got my truck. I'd been halfway down the block. Done. Yeah. I'd have come back yeah. for the truck later. Yep. Back to you, T Streams. That's all you got to say? Yeah, Paul po Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> we not let you, bro. This man, yeah. this man had three kids. That would have been an opportunity for the audience. If Franklin would have let him go, the audience would have been a little bit more sweet on Franklin. But yeah, really that, that was not, that was an opportunity to to regain some type of compassion for this, right? You know, for this downfall that he having, and then just like that, he snatched the rug from up under your feet, and like hell no, nah, he got to go nope. too. You know, this is one of those things when you look at this is this is when you look at Franklin and his in his story arc and and the way our country is with our with our racism and bigotry and everything else. It's one of those things where you see how racism has allowed our country to waste some of the best resources and, you know, some of the best human resources that we have. Because Franklin, if the CIA could have just sort of looked and recognized this dude is a, is a force to be reckoned with, we can leave him out there as a drug dealer on the streets running stuff and making a, you know, what is basically pocket change to the U.S. government. Or we could take him in and train him. And make him really a force to be reckoned with for us, you know, and tell him like you could bring before he completely lost his his everything and got too deep in. They could have gone and said, look, here's the deal. You come and work for us. Or we just kill you. No, nah, you know, or they could have put it in a sweeter way, but they could have they could have basically recruited him and said, we can find somebody else. We can let man boy run drugs. We can let we can let somebody else do the stuff, but this kid is way way too smart to waste away selling drugs on these streets. The gov the government already had somebody in that position. Larry, his name was Teddy. Yeah, and but they could have. He's a good old they, boy. Right, but they could have they could have moved Franklin someplace else. They could have had him doing something similar. They could have moved him someplace else. And let Teddy find him another deal. There's lots of people on the street that they could have found to do what, what Franklin was doing. You know, they didn't need someone yeah. that smart to do what Franklin was doing. They just need someone that knows how to do the job. Well, like you said, this country has a whole lot of holes in it that need to be sold up under a fake ass capitalistic system. That's not fair because we make it not fair. You know, that's the deal right there. Simple as that. All right, we on the last rope, and we start with Larry. No, we're not. We got two more, but this one go to Larry anyway. And Larry, I know what you're gonna say. Take a look. Get this. I just, I wanted you to know that we're okay. We finally settled in North Carolina. I seen them yesterday. It's nice here. <laughs> and, and the boys, the boys are doing okay. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to reach out. Also looked like he busted the nut sure when she it said that. And my mother said she'd kill me. But I still miss you so much. If you do get this. If you made it. Look at the awesome. joy on his face. We all want to see you again. I want to see you again. Mm. Larry, <laughs> look, I'm old enough, Larry... I'm old enough to be at an age where there was a point in time in my youth where uh, you just could dial 1-800-GIRLS. 
<laughs> and get voices that sound like hers on the phone, Larry, because that was a damn hellified sexy phone voice that Oso woman had. Hell, I, she had I'm me a... believing everything was okay. Okay, she would have been getting paid ninety nine cent a minute. Okay, <laughs> and niggas would have been calling her on the phone twenty minutes. You do that about twenty times a day, boy, you making bank. But Larry, you going back you to nine seven six numbers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what you got on that one, Big Larry? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, you know, I wanted to see more. I wanted to see more of Oso, but I will say this. He looked when when they showed him in the ring with those kids, he looked genuinely happy. He did. He looked like he was genuinely happy. And then and then to hear the voice of his of his girl and know that the kids are safe, I think he is. I think he is. I, I part of me thinks like he probably wants to go be with her, but he probably is thinking maybe it's safest not to. So it's they left that it's unclear if if he's going to go there to them, but he looked like he was truly happy. I just wish they would have given us more of that story. You know, that's right. That's right. I got it. What you got, T screens? All yeah, I know is I think you I think you really wanted to. I, I yeah. did. I think you wanted to, but it was nothing that that he could do as long as Teddy was in, you know, was in the behind you know behind the scene manipulating things but you know at this point with with teddy being gone he was actually you know he was actually free as well and so um so i i think that that phone call was his was his sigh of relief and again you saw it on his face and so i i wouldn't be surprised if you know if for some reason that character came back around in any one of the spinoffs that that he made it back to his family i mean it's it only makes sense because that was that was actually what he was trying to do, and so it would only make sense to uh, to see that out. But I know he couldn't he couldn't do nothing as long as they had as long as Teddy was alive. Yeah, you know it's funny. Different. You know it's funny when you look at those two characters when you look at Oso and Franklin, and you have you know sort of like you get to compare the two of them and how their stories ended up. And you have one character that was always talking about family and how he wanted to create generational wealth. There was always this talk about that. And now, really all it turned out to be was just a bunch of talk because he was willing to throw all of his family under the bus for the money. He was talking about doing all this stuff for his family, but he was willing to destroy his family for the money. Whereas Oso was actually about his family. He was like, I want you guys to be safe. Even if that means I have to go and do the worst of it, I want you to be safe. And in the end, you can see what happened to, between them. Their, their family, you know, Oso's family is safe. And as a consequence, he's happy. He doesn't have all the money that he used to have. But instead, what he has is a sense of peace and happiness. He's, a, he's working with those kids doing, you know, Lucha Libre like he wanted to. And on the other end, you have Franklin, who's lost everything. He doesn't have any money. His, his mom is in jail. His uncle's dead. His girl ran away with his baby and his money. And he's living like, you know, a, you know, like a straight up bum. And, you know, it's because he just he was full of crap. He wasn't really about family. He was about the money. You could one could say Franklin was greedy because, remember, he, 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 borrowed, he, he, he borrowed half a million from um, Leon to give to Oso. So that Oso could get the hell out of town and save his family and get the passports. So yeah. o Oso is living off of whatever he kept that he didn't give his baby mama, who I just seen in North Carolina. She better stay out of Alamance County now because uh, the sheriff here do not like Hispanic folks and went to the Supreme Court and won to uh, won for um, floundering around Spanish people. So don't just, if, if that was you I seen, leave Alamance County and go to Charlotte, Mecklenburg County, something like that. Get out of here. We don't do that here. And last but definitely not least, this one's for you. We'll start with you, T-Streams. We'll end with the living legend. And then we'll all get out of here and start debating the next show we're going to jump on to. Here we go. Take your fucking nettles. <laughs> Why? And took everything else. Stop. You don't understand, yo, yo. I'm... I ain't got no fucking chains on me, man. I'm free. <laughs> you my best friend. Best friend I ever fucking had. And I'm fucking proud of you. You hear me?
T Streams, was that not enough for you to take all feelings you have from Franklin, dump them on Leon, talk to me about the ending scene of the last episode of Snowfall? Well, you know, um, you see, the from the looks of it, it looked like the, the roles is definitely not necessarily reversed, but he's put into a position where that Leon had, had – just recently been dealing with uh with his with his gal a little bit but though it didn't though it didn't clarify or say anything about him being on drugs we do know that he had that he had a bottle and we do we see the tear and we see leon moving like nigga you breathing too close to my face <laughs> but uh you know that was his homeboy and so you know that really that really hurt him you know you that really hurt him that was his homeboy and I mean, he brought you into the game, and and here he is. He can't even go to the store with you know asking for ten dollars, you know. And I mean, that's that's just that's right there. It's a sad thing to see. And so I wouldn't, um, you know, it's no telling what's going on through his head. You know, right now he he probably thinking that it's nothing that he could actually do for Franklin. Mm -hmm. But you know. Man, where do where do it go from there? I mean, at, at any junction of the story, I mean, since since he's still out and he's not he's not deceased or is he in jail? I mean, so I mean the the door is open for for any type of um, for any type of continuous with his with his character. But Leon looking like all hope is lost. I mean, he turned down the one thing that that he could have set him up. He could have you know paid off the taxes for the house. At least it gave him, a, you know, some kind of. Uh, he could at least had a base to, to, so he could start over. But you can't start over, you know, with the folks, you know, running through your stuff, and it's likely you ain't even going back there. You know, telling where you sleep in the night. You know, you got the bottle in your hand. Ain't no work coming in because because y'all didn't y'all didn't kill the plug. And so I mean, right now everything is just just all you know, just all ass backwards. No, if yeah, I was Frank, me, I'd, I'd back on the plane, take my ass back to Africa. Franklin's got to have a real mindset shift. Uh, you know, me having done a nonprofit dealing with people who get homeless for numerous reasons, you can get all the services and help surrounding you, but it still takes you got to want it in your mind yeah. to make the change. You know, people can't hand you everything forever. And at this point, if he's not even trying to have the mindset of, okay, this man is going to save my house, you know, if his mind is not even there to let him do that, I mean, hope is just about lost for Franklin. But, um, Larry, I'm going to give you the floor, man. What you think other than, damn, Franklin must smell like turtle ass? Well, I will say, first off, when I was watching this scene, and I know some people are probably going to be annoyed with me by this, but one of my thoughts was, about uh damson idris in his in his acting i was just like he the brother's a good actor but sometimes watching this this i mean this scene and, and watching him throughout the series sometimes i'm like bro you need to stop channeling denzel so much i know that i've, I've watched i've seen some interviews with him and i just know that he said that he that denzel's been an inspiration his performances have been an inspiration sometimes i feel like he goes from channeling Denzel to almost imitating him in some ways, because sometimes like from the walk that he has to his mannerisms, the, the, you know, just sometimes it's a little too much, you know, and, and it's not like Denzel is some, is some obscure actor from the, you know, from the golden days that people don't know about. And you, you know, you're sort of mimicking their style because you find it, you know, you like them. Denzel's an active actor that people see he's iconic and when you see someone else doing what you know sort of moving in the way he does talking in the way he does when he went like that that one scene I, it was a it was early in the season where he gave this real passionate monologue and it was it just I was like it just felt like he was like he someone said do it the way Denzel did or maybe that's what he thought and it was just too much but so that was would you rather would you rather him channel Chan and Ted fucking Tatum no, I well, Channing Tatum is, is somehow he's having no. a great career, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dog he, him out. But Larry, I will he's I will say a this: great career because of the people he know and folks think he look good. He right. is a horrible actor. 
Period. I, w- I will say this. If you are going to channel someone, if you are going to, if you're going to imitate someone and channel someone, make it someone great like Denzel. So, I mean, as far as, yeah. as far yeah. as picking a great actor, yeah. he did that. Um, you know, as far as this scene, my one of my first thoughts was is that they were already there knocking on the door to seize his property. I was thinking like Leon could probably go get this thing at auction for like, you know, two dollars for a couple dollars. I mean, yeah. the thing is a piece of crap. It's in a gang infested neighborhood. Yeah. He could probably go get this house for next to nothing, and you know, you know, and and be done with it. So, yeah, I, I mean, you want it? You want to help your boy out? But first of all, MO, I look at the comments. Somebody called me Uncle Tom. All I will say is if anytime someone calls a black man an Uncle Tom, I, I know immediately that you have not read the book. And so <laughs> go read the book before you call somebody Larry, an Uncle Tom because what you really would want to call somebody Larry, is a sandbox. Stay on mission. Stay on mission. Ignore so, the comments. Stay on mission. So, you know, I... I I, th- I I want him to I want him to help him have a base there, but you know I, he's what to do a base to do what to drink himself to death. I mean, he needs right. some help. I think he, he would be best served if you were able to just take him and grab him up and put him in a in a rehab somewhere and help him get dried out. He should go to the same center that Sissy told Leon not to support no more. Hmm. Mm. There's that. That's where. He- that's but she she told him to leave it alone. Remember, he was about to give the money to rep, you know to keep the, the um place going, and she told him, Nope, go be with your wife. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I, you know, it was it was, I mean, it was a good scene. It was a good yeah. scene. It was it was nice to see those two interact with each other and sort of finalize, or not I guess sort of finalize their relationship, you know. Hmm. But how did you it's, like it's the kind of... scene? How did you like when they walked past the scene where he was talking about them filming, talking shit to him, like you ain't gonna win no Oscar? That was homage to John Singleton yeah, starting to... the show. How did you like that? Yeah, I did. I liked that when I saw that. I was like, oh, I wonder if they're if they're supposed to be them filming Boys in the Hood. So <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> that was that was kind of that was kind of cool. So um uh-huh. But it was, you know, overall, overall, I think that it was, it was a decent episode. It was, it was disappointing in some ways, but it was, it was very, it was very much, um, it was very much pleasing in some other ways, you know, but it's, it's one of those things. Anytime you make a a piece of art, not everyone's going to be happy with it. Not everything is going to please everyone or everything about it's going to please everything about it. But I love, I, one thing I did love is just the visuals of that scene with that on that street. Like I, I remember when I first, when I first moved back East, um, you know, when I was in college and, and people were like, oh, you guys don't even have any, you guys don't even have any hoods in California. You guys have all these palm trees and yards and everything else. Cause people didn't recognize people. And you know, and I talked to some people who had, you know, from the East Coast who had who had came to California, they didn't realize they were in bad neighborhoods when they were in bad neighborhoods. Cause you look at a street like that where people have single standing homes, there's front yards, there's palm trees lining the streets. They go, they think, Oh, this is a nice neighborhood. Not knowing that they're in the middle of the hood, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was just, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I mean, those, you can see that street and that you can see a street that looks exactly like that in the worst part of the hood in South central or you can see it that lives in a in a high end area in like South Pasadena, and the streets will look exactly the same with those palm trees lining the streets, and they're fantastic. I had palm trees in my backyard growing up. It just it it made me feel very nostalgic for uh, for California. 